So, I thought I'd work on something different today. Since we're, we're restricted with the spicy cough here in uh, the ACT. I thought it'd be a good excuse to finally get my guillotine operational. Little bit of a quick back history. Zach actually bought this machine probably five or six years ago. Uh, we went out with him to pick it up. He took that flywheel to the chest or some part of it to the chest, nearly winded him. Nearly knocked him over actually, it was pretty funny. Anyway, cut forward two, three years later, Zach had to move to Sydney, so I purchased purchased it off him. Um, we were told it was fully operational when it was sold. We never had three failures power to supply to actually be able to test it. So the motor there always ended up off. Um, you can see it was on a bar. It has actually four big ribbed V-drive v belts. Spun the flywheel. Anyway, it eventually ended up here in my shed. I pulled the motor off because it was massive and I bought a motor. So, this is a single phase motor. Same size spindle on it, same size keyway, which is beautiful, but single phase. So, it also spins at the same RPM as the big three phase motor, which is good, because that means I don't have to adjust the ratios and stuff, because I'm assuming that is only balanced to a point and then it becomes a projectile. So what I've done, I've actually loosened off all the bolts there's a set of slides that sort of guide the blade there loosened off these top ones same thing loosened off this side and i just went through with a bit of lithium grease and sprayed everything um make sure it was all moving i thought i better make sure everything moves and works before i even try and attach the motor so give you a quick qu quick demonstration That flywheel gets up to speed, and there's like a clutch there. As you hit the clutch, machine go down. So I'm gonna leave my foot on there and manually operate it. Uh, put this down for a second so you can see it happening. And eventually, it comes back around and it can go again. In this case, Do a full revolution again. You'll hear that click. Is that essentially like taking your foot off the clutch and the flywheel spins again? So, my next process is to make sure that shaft is clean because it seems to be a little bit sticky and the clutch doesn't quite engage. And see how it doesn't disengage either. See how it didn't quite pull back out. I'm not sure what's going on there. So I've got to clean that shaft up, get some proper lube on it. Uh, we've lubed up all the other pulleys and bell cranks on it. Like I said, everything's loose, so nothing's adjusted. Should be right. Get that sorted. And then we're gonna try and reuse this old motor mount, essentially. But instead of mounting it like they did, which was kind of on the floor and just off this bit of angle, I don't have the depth for that here. So I'm gonna try and come up diagonally and have the motor like up here somewhere. Hopefully the belts will be the same length roughly and it'll, it'll all work. So yeah, let's do it. Now viewers, this is the wrong tool for the right job. It may go pear shaped, it may go perfectly. I don't actually know. Anyway. This is just a steering wheel puller. I obviously use it for harmonic balances. It's been pretty good to me. Selection of bolts. Anyway, the bolts I had weren't long enough. Didn't have enough of a shoulder on them. Uh, I found these, I think they're LS1 head bolts or something. Anyway, pretty large flange on it. Got some engagement there. Spaces off our brake adapters and a nut that just happens to fit. Don't even know if it's the right thread, but it threaded on, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, a couple of cable ties to hold it all in place and uh, I'm gonna crank on it here, and I'm hoping the lube that I put in there before just goes, and it all just pops off, nice, nice and easy. 
So uh, I'm either going to lose an arm, a finger, a leg, or whatever, or that's going to come off smoothly. Anyway, let's um, let's cut back to that. Ah, oh, just popped me bolt off. Might still work. No. No. I need to... What do we need to do? Realistically, viewers, you should have a gear puller on this. It's got like three little teeth on it. Now hook into the back and do stuff. But I don't have one of them right now, so just making do with what I do have, which is a collection of wrong tools. Trust the old quick grip, maybe. A few. Oh, look at that. There it goes. Easy. Easy. Dink. There you go. Sweet. Righto. On to the next step. Righto, quick fill in. Motor is off the old stand. I actually cut a little bit of the mounting plate that the motor sits on. I now have a motor like 30, 70, 89% mounted, kind of, not really, doesn't matter. Using one of the standard bolts at the bottom there, which is sweet. Using the piece of angle line that it used to have. It actually used to sit flat on the floor. Probably would have bolted up through those holes there. And that adjustment was on that bolt, obviously. So now I have it sitting in the same alignment. That old, big old three-phase motor has the same footprint as this one. It also has the same offset. So that means once this pulley is pushed all the way in, everything will line up sweet. If it doesn't go all the way in, I can still put it. There's still a bit of meat on that pulley. I can actually machine off the back to get it that last little bit home. And there's actually a thread in there, so I can bolt it on. It'll never fly off. Everything will be happy days. Why I cut the base plate is so. Oh, there he goes. It's actually so it clears the machine and some of the bolts. It's obviously originally not intended to be configured like this, but I don't really care. AP lever out of business, so you know, I'm gonna make my own business. So that's mounted up there. Next thing I've got to do is somehow sort out the adjustment because obviously you need tension on the belt so it doesn't slip on this, doesn't slip on that. So, yeah, I also need to put another bolt through here somewhere. I might actually try and drill back through the cast leg into the angle. I can actually bring it up and I should be able to get one bolt through there. We'll just secure that be good what I also might do is there's another bolt you can't see it way down there it's another bolt down there on the foot it's there somewhere it actually there's a second hole in this angle or when it was on the ground I'm actually gonna try and pick up that bolt and make like a stiffener to go up here somewhere just so there's not too much movement in that leg so that's where I'm at next thing is to finish mounting that 
and then measure the belt. So the belts I have now too short. I'm gonna have to get a bit of string, measure the belt, and then I'll take that to my local parts store and get a new belt. So yeah, that is spicy cough edition of shed tails. fast forward a couple of days guys and I um, actually moved the machine from over there to over here and I took the motor off being up high because I was going to have issues with the motor wobbling and carrying on up here it was going to be a little bit too dangerous I thought so what I've done is gone back to the original configuration except I've just moved the motor forward backwards that way um, it's pretty close it does look very close but it should work actually wired it up checked its rotation and she spins so I've just gone and got four new belts after measuring roughly what I need um, it had these really big long ones um, come here. that is where's the buddy so that's an A100 belt it means it's 100 inches long I have gone and got 85s from m g Industrial, they're sort of our local industrial supplies here in Canberra, good blokes over there. Um, so, pull this one out of the cardboard, one handed to hold the GoPro, down the ground for a second, and then I'm going to try and fit this up, maybe one handed. <coughs> Hold on, let me put the camera down. All right, that's four belts fitted up. Pretty happy with the tension. Still a little bit of play in it. Seems to rotate somewhat. So, uh, I'm gonna fire it up in a second. Let's see how this goes. to do. Now turn in the blade. Let's give it a hit. <laughs> How good is that? Lovely. Now I just need to clearance it. Clearance yet, but I'm going to try and cut one full length. It's actually frag longer anyway, which is fine. Here's me, trusty. You'll do. Trim me off about there, somewhere. I'm going to put the camera down right here. bit of an edge on it there. It's pretty nice at that end. So I probably just need to pull this side in a little bit. Um, it's just a matter of undoing these two side bolts, fill on with these two adjusters and just get it so it's really nice. Like thickness of a piece of paper is what they ask for. So I'm gonna do that now and have another cut. I cut a full strip to sort of give me an idea of what was going on. This side, pretty nice, about what I'd expect. Pretty good all the way. Roughly around the middle here, it started getting a little bit worse. And you can 
not that you guys can feel it, but I can feel it. The burr was quite wild, it actually rolled over the edge. Really hard to see, but it's there. Anyway, so what I did, I read out my feeler gauges, did a bit of research. Um, it was what they were saying, it's 0.06 of a mil for every mil of sheet. So I want to cut 1.6 mil sheet in this mach machine. Um, so I need about 0.09. I actually have a 0.09 feeler. And what I did is I just manually run it, drop the head down, loosened off all this hardware. And what I was doing, not you'll be able to see it done properly now, I was actually putting this gauge between the two blades, just till it was tight, and then I just back it off a little bit so I could get it out. Went back through and checked it with a 10, so 0.1 of a mil. Or one mil, I guess. No, 0 0.1 of a mil, whatever. Checked it with a 0 0.8 and a 0 0.07. So I was pretty happy with how it is. So what I'm actually gonna do now is put that sheet back in there and cut it and see what kind of result I get this time. So let's get this down here. here. That looks pretty good. needs a shim in the middle there somewhere but I can probably live with that it's about the same all the way around just a little bit higher here um, there is a way of doing it there's I don't know if you can see them there's some bolts up here you actually loosen the bolt off you get like a really fine thickness shim and you put it behind there and it actually spaces this out or in depending on what you're trying to do but Pretty happy with that cut, so might as well put this thing into action now. I'm gonna have to put my shed back where it normally, or rearrange the shed now. And uh, yeah, so that's a little uh, backyard builds tool update, I guess. Um, thanks for watching, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.